So welcome back. I'm so glad you can join me again today. Well, we're going to embark on fixing up our first person character. And here's what I mean by that. When we do create a first person shooter map, uh, one of the first things we do start to notice is that, uh, well, our first person character is not the greatest. It's okay. It's got some movement. We can move forward and back, side to side. We can jump and it's okay. And, you know, we have this kind of futuristic gun in the mannequin hands. But we don't have any HUD. We don't have an ammo counter, health bar or anything. And I think most people come to the realization that they really want to start fixing up that first person character so I thought it makes sense and uh, the other thing we do have with the first person character is this projectile it kind of has that sound and this bouncing ball and it's okay again for kind of illustrative purposes for kind of just messing with the editor but obviously we do want to fix that so what we want to actually end up with is uh, something more akin to this so let me just uh, pop open a map here real quick that I did and uh, we're just going to embark on fixing just a couple of things we're going to put in a running crouch uh, we have a prior video for that so we might as well just slam that in because it just takes a couple of seconds but what we're going to fix is that projectile on this first map and here's what it looks like you can see we have a custom sound and I used a kind of a Smith & Wesson sound and I'll show you where I got that from and then also the projectile no more bouncing ball kind of have this trace if you will and it looks quite nice and it's a quick and easy thing that we can do for sort of this first video to uh, improve our first person character. Now, uh, fixing this first person character is actually quite involved and would, uh, would take quite a long time. And that's why I think I'm going to spread it over a number of videos. But this first one will just uh, fix up that projectile. And I'm not going to probably do these first person... Uh, player improvements sequentially or, or, or in order. That is, we'll do this one to kind of get started and then we might go off and maybe play with materials or do doors or something and we'll come back. But over time, I'll do uh, videos, we'll clag onto this first person shooter and eventually we'll end up with a character that we can really be proud of. So that's what we're gonna look at today is this projectile and adding run and crouch. So let's jump in and let's have a look at that. So we're going to start off just by making a quick new project. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Let's make sure we're in Blueprint here. We do our water. We do want our starter content. We want to develop in first person uh, shooter game here. And then let's uh, just name this something. And I'm going to call it Quadruple A Tom Character Map. And I'm just putting the A's in there just so it uh, the map appears at the front of the list. So let's go ahead and create that. Okay, so there it is there. And first thing we're going to do is we're just going to make a couple of really quick changes here. So let me just grab this. I'm going to grab all these little cubes and I'm just going to delete them. So I'm going to grab those. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shift this guy up just so we can prove our, uh, proof our crouch. So let me just go over here real quick. Slide this guy up here. And we want 170 units. So we're just using our middle mouse button, holding it down and dragging. And I just want to get 170 just so we can proof our crouch. So there we go. Okay, we're at 170, so that's perfect. So let's go ahead and save that. All right. So there we are, and we're ready to go. So what we're going to start off with, let's put in our run and crouch first. And we did this in a past video, but uh, we'll just take a second and do that real quick. Now, before we, yeah, okay, so before we do that, one thing we do have to remember, so let's go into our root folder. We're going to go into our first person blueprint, into our blueprints, and we're going to pop open this first person character. And first thing we're going to do, just so we don't forget, is we're going to come over here to this character movement inherited. Let's click on that and let's filter for crouch. And we want to make sure this can crouch is ticked. Now, we talked about this in the other video about running crouch. And you can do anything you want. You can uh, wire up the most fancy crouch movement in the world. If you don't have this selected, it's not going to work for you. So don't forget to select it. Otherwise, you're going to be uh, you know, smashing your keyboard and writing me nasty letters that this doesn't work. So just make sure that you get that off the hop. Okay, and let's just drag this first person character over here just so we can jump back and forth. Let's go ahead and save that. Okay, so we're in our first person character character blueprint first thing we can do is get rid of this stuff this is just for uh, the um, let's see here for the virtual reality we don't need that we can always bring it back if we need it I mean if you are gonna do in VR develop in VR then keep this in but I'm just gonna delete it for now it's just gonna give us less stuff to worry about so we're gonna come over here into a little open area let's do our crouch first so what we want to do is we want to filter for the control key we want left control that's what i want to bind it to you can bind it to the c key or left control now again this i did this in another video uh, but uh, we're just going to do it real quick here so let's take off this context sensitivity and let's just type in crouch here just to filter for crouch and there's our crouch function let's deselect that and let's filter again for uncrouch this time and hit enter and there it is there so what we're doing here is when we're going to press the left mouse key 
it's going to crouch and when we don't have the left uh, control key press then it's going to uncrouch and this must be sort of hardwired or something like that because we don't have to tell it to, to affect the player movement so that's the crouch and let's just comment that real quick player crouch now this is a kind of a cheesy crouch and we're going to improve this but again that's going to be a later video so let's put in a run so we want to do let's start off with our shift key so let's just filter for the shift key we're going to go left shift that's going to be our our run what we want to do here is search for, uh, let's see here, set max walk speed. This is the one we want here. So let's put that guy up there. Let's copy and paste it. Control C and then we'll come down here. Control V. We'll put that there. And let's set some values. So this is going to be our max watt speed when we're running. And 2200 seems to be pretty good. That's what we used before. And then when we're walking, our, our walk speed is going to be 600, which happens to, to be the default Unreal 4 speed. So there it is there. Now we have to have one more node in here. And we're just going to put in character movement. And this one down here, get character movement. That's the actual name of it. So there. All right. So when our left shift mouse, uh, sorry, left shift button is depressed on our keyboard, we're going to set the um, uh, the walk speed at 2200. And when it's released, it's going to be 600. And then we have to tell the speed. What are we applying that speed to while well, our character movement? So we're going to drag out of here and target, hit that. And we're going to hit that. Then we're just going to compile and save. <clears throat> Let's go into the map. We'll save it. And now we should have our running crouch. So if I come over here now, I can hit my crouch. And it's our cheesy crouch. It just sort of pops down and pops up. <clears throat> We're going to improve this crouch. But like I said, it's a little bit more complicated and it's too much for this video. So let's just leave that for now. And then our run, if we hit our shift key, our left shift key, we can see that we're running quite quickly. So there it is there. That's our walk and this is our run. <clears throat> okay, so that's done. One thing I like to get rid of is this. I don't know. I don't like this. All right, there we are. I'm not sure why I have such a problem with that, but there it is. All right, so there we are. Let's go ahead and save that. Okay, so let's have a look at this here uh, projectile. So what we're going to do is out here in our root folder in our content, we're going to jump in here to our first person blueprint. And again, in blueprints, and we're going to find this first person projectile. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to actually alter the original blueprint. Now, the thing is, you might want to create a copy of it or duplicate of it and change it all around. But the problem with that is if we go into our first person character all this is wired up already and if we create a custom one that is a different blueprint this is all this wiring is going to break and I want to be able to use all this wiring why redo all this work and you know have to you know fudge around with these ones or maybe even create it all new it's all wired up for us plus secondly I mean I don't really want to see this projectile anymore and uh, we're just going to replace it. We're just going to overwrite it. That's much easier. It's not going to wreck your first person projectile on any other project. We could always bring it back if we need it. But uh, for our little first person character here, I don't ever want to see this bouncing ball again. So we're going to actually edit the first person projectile. It's the easiest way to do it. So that's how I'm going to do it. So we're going to pop open that first uh, person projectile. And it's uh, docked it here for us. So we can jump back and forth to the map, which is nice. And we're basically just going to start by getting rid of all this. So let's go ahead and delete that. And we can see we have nothing in here, which is perfect. Just what we want. Okay, so let's go over to the viewport. And we can see that our little projectile actually has three parts to it, kind of three entities, if you will. It's got a collision component, a sphere, and a projectile. And we're going to edit all of these. Now, actually, before we do that, we're going to create a custom material because we are going to need it. So let's go ahead and do that first. Forgot about that. All right, so back in our uh, map, I'm just going to go to the root folder and I'm going to create a new file folder just to keep things neat. And we'll call this Tom custom assets I guess custom assets blueprints eh, could just be assets there we go and we're gonna go in here and for now we're just gonna create another folder and we'll call it materials okay there it is there and let's pop that open okay so we're inside there so let's right mouse uh, click in this box here let's create this material blueprint we're gonna call this tracer material let's hit enter and let's double click it and then it takes us inside here. We've already got an output uh, node. We just have to add a couple things. Now we looked at creating a custom uh, material in a very first video. So we're going to do a lot of the same stuff here. First thing we're going to put in here is a vector parameter. There it is there. 
And it's just going to let us adjust some of the parameters. And we can call this color. It doesn't really matter what we call it. Let's double click it. I'm going to hit it with this sort of warm kind of yellow color, almost orangey kind of color. And that should be good. So let's go ahead and do that. And it'll pop up in just a second. That's pretty good. And then we're just going to add two more little nodes here. What I'm going to call scalar parameter. Put that in there. That can just stay the same name. And while it's selected, I want to come down here where it says default value. And we want to give this a value of, say, 60. Okay, there that is. And then we just want to put one more node in. And this will put in a multiply. Multiply. Just a simple multiply. And there that is. What this is going to enable us to do is to kind of combine the color along with this sort of booster, if you will. And it's going to allow us to kind of create a glowing texture. Now, if we don't use these and we just go here and straight into the emissive, we're going to get a bit of a glow but not much. You see it's kind of glowing, but it's not very spectacular. So what we can do is Alt and left mouse button to break that line. Let's drag these down here. We're just going to boost that emissive a little bit. So we're just going to take this first uh, parameter here, and we're just going to put it into that uh, A channel. Now let's take this and put it into that B channel, and then we're going to connect that up to our emissive. And when we do that, it's just going to boost it up a little bit and give it th that nice glow. So that's exactly what we want. So let's go ahead and save that. And we can close that material tab. We don't need that anymore. All right, so we're back in this uh, first person projectile blueprint. There it is there. And let's edit these three little items here. So let's start with the collision component. So there's a couple of things we want to change in the details panel. The first one we want to do is down here, simulation generates hit events. So we want to click that. It's not super important for the first video, but eventually we do want to be able to generate certain things once we collide uh, with uh, items in the map with this collision component. Like, for example, if we want to put decals for the bullet holes and other things, things we want to make sure that's ticked so that's the first thing we want to do the next thing we want to do is we want to come down here to the events and we want to add an on component hit event and let's just hit plus now if we look in our event graph it's put in this node on component hit and it's specifying the collision component so that's what we want there so let's leave that guy alone there for a moment let's go back to that uh, viewport and that's all we need to do with that uh, collision component so let's come down to that sphere and that's a basically a static mesh. All right, we want to do a couple things to this static mesh. So again, the same thing, we want to come down here and we want to look for that simulation generate hit events. Let's make sure that's ticked. Then what we want to do is we want to kind of distort this. We don't want that ball. So what we're going to do is come up to this transform and this is a static mesh. What we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of scaling here. And I messed with these numbers before and these seem to work pretty good. So on the X, we're going to go 0.6. This is kind of weird and you'll see what I'm getting at here in a second. Let's put 0 0.02 on that one. We'll put 0 0.02 on that one. And because this projectile is wired to travel along the x-axis, what we're creating here is almost like a blurred effect. And we'll see how that uh, how it comes into play just in a moment. So we've altered the shape of that uh, static mesh. Now we want to do is apply that tracer material on here. So let's filter for that tracer material. There it is there. And there she is going nicely. Perfect. And that's all we need to do there. Is that right? Uh, let's see here. Da, 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 da. Component hit. There we did that. Oh, and then, of course, we want to come down here. We want to make sure we click this on component hit again. So we do that for the uh, sphere. Then if we come down here to the event graph, it's put in this on component hit sphere this time. So we've got one for the collision component and one here for the sphere. That's all we need there for now. So let's go back into that viewport. The last thing we want to do on this projectile blueprint is this projectile little component here and a couple of changes that we want to make here so the projectile speed the projectile is really what gives it all the motion so this is what we're going to mess with a little bit here in the projectile the initial speed I find a value anywhere between 7,000 to about 10,000 is pretty good so we'll go 8,500 and 8,500 here for the max speed. So initial speed and max speed we want to change. Let's hit enter and that's done there. This should bounce. Let's deselect that because we don't want this to bounce. So that's done there. And is there anything else we need to do on this projectile? Let me have a look. 
Okay, and then the last thing we want to mess with is this gravity. So let's have a look. Where it says projectile gravity scale. Right now we've got one G on that. So we've got gravity pulling on it. So it creates that kind of arc. It kind of lobs the projectile. We don't want that. We still want a little bit of gravity on it, but not much. And we would adjust this based on the kind of projectile. If this is a pistol, for example, it would fall off a lot quicker than, say, ammunition for a sniper rifle. All those things would come into play. But for now, just for keep it simple, let's put 0.3 in there. There. And that's all the changes we need to do for uh, our blueprint for our projectile. So there we go. Now, this event graph we still have to wire up, and I'm going to leave it alone for now because if we just look to see what we have now, we're almost there, but not quite. So here's our guy, and then uh, we're just going to uh, hit our uh, fire button. And then we get our projectile, but it kind of sits there. It almost looks like a spear. And that might work okay if we're you know, creating an arrow or a spear, but it's not quite right for what we're doing. So let's go back into that first person projectile uh, blueprint and go to the event graph. And we just have to add one thing in here. And uh, that's going to be, let's see here, well, destroy. We want to go actor destroy, actor destroy. It's probably not showing up because we have to lose this constraint. There we go. And we want to go destroy actor. There it is there. Okay, so what we're saying is when the collision component hits something, we want to destroy that actor. So let's go ahead and pull that out there. And then when that uh, sphere hits, that static mesh, we want to do the same thing. So that's that. So if we hit compile and save, we go back into our map. Now when we shoot, it disappears when it's hit something. And that's basically one more, what we want to do. So that's looking pretty good for now. Now the last thing we want to do is let's mess with that sound. And actually how to change that sound. Well, first thing we need to have a sound. And I don't I didn't have any pistol sounds. So what I did was I went to the internet and just searched around. And I found this nice little website called soundbible.com. And God bless these guys. They got a bunch of free sounds here for us. The only caveat is that this is a totally free sound, but you have to have attribution. So we're just going to credit Sound Bible for that. And then you search around in there and I found this 40 Smith and Wesson sound. And the guy that created it, Mike Cunning. Thank you, Mike, for blessing us with this wonderful little sound file. It's totally free. And uh, we just want to make sure Mike gets credit for it. And I found this little 40 Smith & Wesson sound. And you got a WAV file and MP3. We want to download the WAV file. So you just double click that. It places it on your computer. And uh, I happen to put it into a folder here, this downloads folder. And there it is there. And to bring it into the game is really easy. All we have to do... And it's actually much easier than even the Doom 3 editor. Because <laughs> the Doom 3 editor, we'd have to create our file folder structure and do all kinds of other things. So we're going to come down here in our root folder. And remember, we created this Tom custom asset. So let's go in there. Let's create another folder called an audio folder. There we are. Let's double click that. And to bring in an audio file, we just need to find out where it is on our computer, left mouse button, drag it in, drop it in, and there it is. And we can actually preview it just by pressing it. And there it is there. It's not perfect. It's got a bit of a delay when it starts up, but it's pretty good. We could go in and edit it and tighten it up, but it's good just the way it is. All right, so it's in our game now. Now, how to alter that sound? We're actually going to go into our first-person character blueprint. And uh, this is the part that does the projectile as we looked at. And if we start poking around in here, we can see this node which says play sound at location. And we can just change the sound really easily. This little pull down menu here. We can see our sound file here. If we don't know where it is, we can filter for the 40. There it is there, 40 Smith & Wesson. We pop it in. Just that simple. Compile and save. And now we can go into the map and play. And there we've got it. And there's that Smith & Wesson sound. Now, we're going to gussy this up as time goes on, but here our character is starting to take shape. We've got our little crouch, which again, we're going to have a much nicer crouch in the next video. But for now, there we have our crouch, and there we have our run for our shift key. Lovely. And we've got our custom projectile. So I think we're going to leave it there for today. As I said, future videos will clag onto this first person shooter. We'll add some arms, a better gun, you know, the HUD elements like a health bar, an ammunition counter, etc. We're going to leave it here today. So I'd like to thank you for joining me. If you haven't already, subscribe. Please do. It really does help us out. But in the meantime, keep, uh, keep editing and uh, all the best and uh, stay well. Thank you for watching.